630 and we're going to jump right in. I see other people coming, but I do believe in respecting your time. We got quite a bit of information that we want to cover and we have some time on the end. I do want to allow some Q&A if you're interested. At any time, feel free. I'm not going to look at the chat while I'm talking because once I get going, I like to get going and go in Jesus. So if you are have a question or something you want me to come back to, please put it in the chat. Charday's going to keep a look at that. We'll be able to go back and I'll be able to capture those. And we want to make sure you have clarity on those things. But as people are joining, we have quite a few people that are going to be coming in. I do want to introduce myself. I see several familiar faces, but I also know that there are a couple people that are online that I don't know personally. So as we're jumping in tonight, I want to just take a couple of minutes to introduce myself. Can everyone hear me clearly? I'm using a new mic. Is everybody good? It's a really weird looking mic, so I got comfortable with this thing. But my name is Keisha Spivey. I have been married to my BFF for 25 years. I have three biological children and a whole lot of babies that call me mama. I am a certified life coach and have lots of credentials and certifications there. I am an ordained minister. I've been preaching for probably 25 years. I have um, a few higher education degrees. I am a, probably a semester, 16 weeks or so away from completing my doctorate. And I'm sharing all that out of the gate to just give you a glimpse into my current life. I get the joy of being an executive director for a local nonprofit. I also am the COO of a, of a for-profit. I run KBS Enterprises and I get the joy of sitting on several boards and things like that. But I wanted to share a little bit about that but I also want to kind of rewind a little bit for those who may know me now, but you didn't know me then. At 29 years old, I was a college dropout. I was 20 pounds overweight. I was suffering from depression and I was going through the motions of looking good on the outside, but feeling trapped on the inside. And for those who've heard me share my story, it was kind of the eve of my 30th birthday and I was so depressed and I was crying out to God because I really thought, you know, I'm turning 30. And for those women, you know, 30 is a big milestone. You, you're like, oh my God, I'm not where I want to be. I don't have any of the things I thought of. Well, you know, we thought 30 was a milestone until you turn 40. And then I'm assuming 50, you keep going. But I was turning 30 and just felt like I hadn't accomplished anything in my life. And I was crying out to God saying, you know, God, I should be happy. I got a good husband. I got children. I got my health. But on the inside, y'all, I was miserable. I felt like I was a failure. I didn't have any of the trappings I thought I would have at that time in my life. And in my mind, all I saw myself as was a dropout. You know, I had another year and a half of college and, you know, life and circumstances and family and drama and stress and debt, just all these things, I stepped away from it. And so all I ever saw was this label. And I remember crying out to God saying, you know what, God? You know, I was one of those super spiritual Christianese Pharisees saying, God, if this is as good as it'll ever get, I'll still serve you. If this is as good as it'll ever get, I'll still love you. And I remember just running off this list of God, I thank you. And I'm excited about this and all that other stuff. And God said to me, you know, that's a sad prayer. And yeah. I was kind of offended because I couldn't understand what was wrong with that. And what it was, was here I was counting myself out and done, and I hadn't got started, y'all. I was thinking 30 was kind of the end of the road, and God saying, Keisha, girl, boo, get yourself together. And what happened for me at 30 years old, I enrolled back in college. And what that taught me was that at any point in your life, you have the power to make a decision and change the narrative. At any point, you can make a decision and change your position. At any point in your life, you can declare enough and no more. At any point, you can declare enough is enough. At 30 years old, I decided, hold up. There is so much more to me than what I've become. There's so much more on the inside of me that I've yet to develop. At any point, you can retire your victim badge. At any point in your life, you can shift into a position and start over. And I shared the credentials that I have now because, yes, I got a beautiful wall of degrees and certificates and diplomas. That's great. But what I remember was the 30-year-old who had none of that, who had bad credit, who had to catch the bus to school because I didn't even have a car because our finances were so tore up that it was repossessed. See, I know that girl, but I also realized that when you make a decision to 
to make some changes that everything about your life can be subject to change. You don't have to be the product of where you are or what you have. You can get in position and do some things. And one of the things that led me to want to have this conversation is that so many people are looking at their lives through the lens of COVID. You know, they're looking at, oh my God, what's going on with COVID? But I want you to think back to the Monday morning when you just thought Corona was still a beer. When all you, all you thought was it was a beer. You didn't know nothing about Corona. All you knew is that you, it was a beer. And if you're honest, a lot of Hispanic people drank it. That's all I knew. All my Hispanic friends drank Corona. And some of my non-Hispanic friends, because we had a few at the table raising their hand. But though I just knew it was a beer. All I knew. But I want you to think back to that Monday. And I want you to ask yourself a few questions. If you got a piece of paper in front of you and you're brave enough to write the answers, write it. If you're brave enough to put it in the chat, write it. I'm not looking, ain't nobody, this is just you. But I want you to ask yourself a few questions. And if you're feeling froggy, put it in there. But I want to ask you this. This is the Monday before you knew what Corona was. The first question is, number one, were you pleased with the life you were living? This is pre-Corona. Were you in the process of achieving your dreams and goals? Were you living a life driven by purpose and fueled by passion? Pre-corona. On that Monday, were you excited to start your work week? On that Monday, were you expecting anything different? I want you to sit on your answers for a minute. And I want you to think about how your responses to those questions make you feel. You know, what emotions do they conjure up? I'm not talking about, you know, today. I'm talking about Monday, 20 some weeks ago. Now I want you to fast forward 161 days. What do I mean? 23 weeks since February 6th. What was February 6th? That was the first U.S. death from the virus. 161 days, that's in the US. So on Monday of this week, this week, 161 days have passed, 23 weeks have passed. Now I want you to ask yourself the same questions on this Monday, because some of y'all got a little amnesia and you can't think back 23 weeks ago. But this Monday, one, were you pleased with the life you were living? And you can answer right next to your original five. Were you in the process of achieving your dreams and goals? Were you living a life driven by purpose and fueled by passion on this Monday, just a couple days ago? Were you excited to start your work week this week? This Monday, were you expecting anything different? And for those of you who are on the video and you're looking at me, were your answers the same or were they different? If, we're, if they were the same, just nod at me. And I want you to think about that because reality, if they were the same, if they're partially different, if you're honest, the question you really need to ask yourself, whatever your answers were on those five questions, is whatever your answers are on that piece of paper, is it working for you? Is it working for you? And tonight's whole conversation is not about gloom and doom. That's not what it's about. It's about a wake-up call. It's about a wake-up call. My whole goal tonight is to sound an alarm. Because we can sit around all day long and look in our life through this lens of COVID, and we can see crisis, or we can recognize a call. We can recognize a call. You can say it's crisis and woe is the world. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe an alarm is sounding and God is calling your life to attention. Maybe he slowed some things down to get your attention. Maybe you were like me on my 30th birthday and I needed to call some things to attention. And what has happened for me is that I have had a call to attention to become a better version of me for me to do better, to have better, and to require better of myself. 
because what will happen, life will rock you to sleep, circumstances will rock you to sleep, and you will get comfortable in a position never designed for you. You'll get comfortable in seasons that you were supposed to walk through, and you will look up and you're still wearing the same hairdo you had at 18, and you 72. That perm been gone. Those ends been split. But you are so comfortable in that. That position has become a default to you. And all the seasons are changing. You don't went through 12 different sizes and you ain't changed your hairstyle. It's time to do something. Tonight, what I want to do is call you to a place of getting in position. This pandemic has changed our lives as we know it. And going back ain't an option. They ain't no going back to normal. They aren't when things are going to get back to normal. You know, the thing I keep asking myself in my head is, Lord Jesus, it ain't how long am I going to wear the mask. It's please let me find one that works for me. I need a breathable mask. I need a cute mask that supports my nose and cheekbones that I can breathe in that I don't, how about this? I need a mask that I can breathe in that doesn't fog up my reading glasses. I need a, a mask that works for me. It's no longer a, when, how long am I gonna wear the mask? Cause I'm gonna wear the mask as long as I got to. So it's not getting back to the normal. It is me being okay with accepting whatever this new is. So this pandemic, if we're honest y'all, we're talking about this call, is speaking a language in our lives that we've never heard. It's speaking a language that we've never heard. So many people saying, you know, I wanna learn a new language. Well, right now you're learning it. You know, I would like to learn how to speak. Mm -hmm. Right now, you're learning how to speak something new. You're learning how to survive in something new. You're learning how to adapt in something new. And for some, it's created this enormous amount of fear. Because the unknown, the uncertainty has gotten you in a place of fear. But when you get into a position and you understand that this thing, wait a minute, it's come, but it shall come to pass, because according to the word, nothing comes to stay. So you've got to get in a position to pass through it, knowing that you will pass through it victoriously. Then what happens is you have to trade in that place of fear to where you get into a place of fierceness. Because I'm not going to stay in fear, because I'm fierce. I need for whoever that is to mute your phone for me, please. Mute your computer. Can you put that in the chat for me? It's a matter of us recognizing that you can either be, you can literally be in fear or you can be fierce. Choose. Choose a position. And what happens is once you recognize this place of fierceness, then you can walk in a place of freedom and you can realize through the power of God, because I just happen to be a woman of faith and a woman who believes you become unstoppable. You become unstoppable because you are reminded that life is short. What COVID has taught me is tomorrow is not promised. And the tomorrow that you may know, it may not look like you think it know, you know. And so what you have is the So what you choose to do with it, how you choose to handle it, how you choose to embrace it, how you choose to walk in it, is all you've got. All you have is the gift of today. So it's the precious present. So you can choose the position you're going to stand in. You get to choose the position that you walk in. You get to choose how you talk. You get to choose your language. You get to choose your posture. So when I think about this, my advice to myself and to everyone I get the opportunity to coach and everyone I get the opportunity to counsel is get in position. Get in position. And so I'm going to give you some points. If you're not writing, this will be a great place to grab your pen or your pencil because I'm going to go through some stuff. And what I want to tell you is as I was preparing for this and God gave me this, he gave me this acronym, which I had never thought about. I didn't read it anywhere. He downloaded this in my spirit during my study time. And I'm like, God, what is this? He says, this is what I'm requiring of my sons and my daughters. If they want to walk into this new and come out victoriously, if they want to come out of this better than they went in it, then this is what I'm requiring of them. And so when you think about this, this position is going to require that you come out of hiding. This positioning is going to require that you show up in your life. 
You got to show up in your life. You know, prior to COVID, you were hiding in complacency. You were hiding in your conditions. You were hiding in circumstances. You were hiding in the life that you created. And COVID has pulled back the veil. And it's almost like God is saying, now what, baby? I shut down the church. Now what do you believe? I shut down the things that you thought were comfortable and the things that you did the past time. Now what, baby? Okay. The gym is shut down. How important to you is health and wellness, really? Now what? I shut down the schools. How important is your children's education to you, really? Now what? So he's making us evaluate what the things are that are really non-negotiables for our life. Because you want to talk about how important your kids are? Then you know what? It's not the teacher's job to raise your children. I think God gave them to you. I'm sorry, that's not in my notes. So anyhow, as I was meditating on getting in position, you know, God gave me this acronym. And when he gave it to me, he gave it to me clearly. And I want to pass it on to you. The first thing is when you think about position, write that down in your notes, position. Get in position. If you don't remember anything that I say as you're moving forward, I want you to challenge yourself. Get in, am I in position? Am I in position? And the P means put away things that are not beneficial or needful that you've just been tolerating, just because. What about the habits, the relationships, the fears, the doubts, the issues? Put your crutches away. Your ankle is healed. Why are you still walking around on those crutches? Stop making excuses to keep stuff and people around. They are your anchors. Here you are talking about wanting to soar and want to rise, but you got an anchor holding you down and you're choosing to stay attached to that thing. And then you're mad at that thing and bitter at God, but you're choosing to stay connected to it. Put those things away. The Bible says when I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child, but then I grew up, grow up. Put your childish things away. Put your toys away. What are the toys that you keep entertaining yourself with? What vices do you keep running back to that are not benefiting you, that are not needful to you? That if you're honest, they are vices that the enemy is using to keep you stuck in a place, to keep you from walking in purpose and destiny, to keep you from being who God has called you to be. And here's what should make you angry. It's almost like giving a pacifier to a child. Here you are, a full-grown adult, and this little thing is pacifying you. And how long are you going to suck on that thing? The O. Open your heart, open your mind, and your soul to new possibilities. This pandemic has shut some doors, but guess what? It has opened some new ones. The reality is, are you open to them? Be open to the things, to the people, to the opportunities that God is bringing to you. Stop looking back. Stop looking at the closed doors and look to the open ones. Stop banging on doors that God has shut. If that season has closed, if that opportunity is gone, stand before God and look toward the hills in which cometh your help, your help coming from the Lord. He didn't shut that without opening something. So here you are throwing a temper tantrum, beating on the door like a two-year-old instead of a mighty man and mighty woman of God saying, God, you didn't leave me this, bring me this far to leave me. So I'm just going to look because I know something is open and I'm going to start walking, trusting that you're ordering my steps and leading me to the open place that you have for me, the place you prepared for me because you're navigating my steps. You're leading me beside still waters. God, I'm walking. I'm going to keep walking until you tell me to sit and be still. But so many times, instead of being open to what God is bringing us to, we're holding on to the doorknob, screaming in agony and pain. When God said, I shut it because what's behind it is no longer there for you. It's no longer needful for you. It's not a part of what I'm taking you to. So be open to the possibilities 
of what COVID has brought you. I, instead of seeing what COVID has taken, I've asked God to show me all the gifts. Because my father is a good, good father, and he don't withhold anything from his daughter. So what are my COVID gifts? What am I gaining? What am I gaining? What are things that you need to be open to? The S. Stop grieving what was and get excited about what is to come. That thing has been dead for years and you're still hanging at the graveyard. You rather cry than laugh because it's familiar. Take off your ash cloths. Stop grieving over dead things. If Jesus wanted to raise it, it'd have been raised by now. Here you are, that man left you, he gone. He gone. He got a new woman, got more kids, and you still hoping he gonna come back? You still got his clothes in the closet? Clean them out. Clean them out. You still holding on to his sweater, want to smell him? Burn it up. Get rid of everything up in your house that reminds you of that joker. Get Cut the ties. Get rid of the soul ties. You still listening to his song. He ain't, he ain't thinking about you. Well, you know what? You can stop grieving that dead horse. Bury that thing. Let him go. Let those memories go. Stop grieving. Stop grieving. God has things he wants, things he wants to bring to you. He, he might, here you are, still worried about boo-boo. He ain't got nothing he can offer you. He has nothing he can offer you. And God said, wait a minute, I need you to start gleaning in my fields. Because there might be a Boaz for you, but you're still running after that broke. You fill in the gap. But you are grieving something that's not yours. Let it go. Don't make me start singing Frozen up in here. Let it go. Let, let, bye, bye, boo, boo. Let it go. And for some of you, it ain't a man. Some of you, it's a job. They fired you. Quit looking at the page to see who they hired in place of you. Just stop. Stop. Let, leave them alone. Move on. I don't know who that's for, but it must be for one of y'all because the Lord just showed me that you go there. Stop. Move on. That P, put away things. That O, open your heart, mind, and soul to the new possibilities. That S, stop grieving what was and get excited about what is to come. That I, is identify untapped skills, potential, and goals that you have rocked to sleep. They are snoring and your life is boring. Give that sedative a name. Your life, Lord Jesus, no wonder you so caught up in lifetime and you watching MTV and reality TV. Because when you look at your own life, you, you somebody need to say resuscitate. There's nothing going on. Your life should be an adventure in Jesus. But you've allowed things to rock the best parts of you to sleep. You have just settled in into your recliner with your holy robe and holy socks and Oreos and ice cream, sucking up good air, mad at everybody else living their life. Or watching Hallmark, mad at every woman who got a man. Or if you got a man, you mad at the single women who ain't got one, you mad at somebody. And you're like, he ain't no good, so I wish I didn't have nobody. You know what you, you know you, and you know what your issue is. I'm just saying. Try something new. Do something different. Instead of Netflixing and chilling, how about podcasting and growing? You know, all the new hot stuff on Netflix. How about reading a book and learning? You know, everybody want to tell me what's new on Netflix? but you can't tell me nothing new you learned. But then you wanna hate on somebody else. Bye-bye. Ain't nobody got time for that. Next. And if you're surrounding yourself with people like that, you out of position. Because if you look at your closest associates and their position, 
You probably close to him. T, time to wake the sleeping giant within you. Now is the time. Now is the time. And as I thought about that, now faith, not tomorrow's faith, not next week's faith, but now faith. I know everything is in the way you want it. I know all your ducks aren't in a row. I know the time that doesn't seem right. But when is the time and right? You know, today when I was reading my word this morning, I saw the word arise three times. It said arise and build. It said arise and work. Then it says now I arise. And as I wrote in my notes, I put it's time. And then the next thing I put after that, it, it was like, no, it's past time. It's time. It's time. Time to wake up. Time to wake up. Time to wake up. Whatever it is, life, whatever it is you've allowed to go to sleep, whatever it is that is literally, if you're honest, that thing on the inside of you that you really believe is tormenting you sometimes. Because I think about, for me, there are things I want to do and things I want to become and things I want to achieve that wake me up in the middle of the night because I'm not going to be completely good until I've gotten them out of me into the earth. There are books I got to write. There are people I got to touch. There are things I have to accomplish because God didn't put them in me for me to leave this earth with them on the inside of me. So the only way they're going to get out of me is for me to deposit them into the earth. So that means I have to wake up the giants on the inside of me. I can't let them sleep forever. The I is imagine what could be. Start dreaming again. You know, you haven't got started yet. Here I am, 30 years old, thinking I was done with three small kids. Y'all, that I had to take the class with me at night because my husband was still working. And I remember riding the bus, painting the picture for them of what life was going to be like for them once mama got her education. And I remember telling them when they started playing sports that I wasn't going to miss their games. I started painting the picture for them of the people I wanted to help and the things we were going to do, the businesses I wanted to run, and the organizations we were going to have. Fast forward almost 17 years, and it's not one picture that we painted riding city transportation that hasn't come to pass. All we did was imagine. And so often we forget that our imagination is a gift that God has given us. He's given it to us for us to see those things that are not yet as though they were. But instead of using our imagination as a gift, we use it as a tool to worry. We think about what's the worst that could happen. We use our imagination as a worry tool instead of a dream tool to apply faith and to apply the possibilities of what could be instead of stretching ourselves and seeing our amazing way making love and God, instead of using the imagination, I think about the, the cows and looking down at the, the wood and seeing something and then duplicating what they saw only because they imagined it. We dreamed what could be. We painted the picture and you have to realize eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard all that God has in store for you. But you've got to start imagining it. You've got to start dreaming it. You've got to start opening your mouth and proclaiming it. And I'm not talking about faking it. I'm not talking about claiming it. I'm talking about faith in it according to the word of God. Because if God's word says it, that settles it. I'm not talking about what somebody else said. I'm talking about what the word of God says about you. If you got ailments in your body, your, the word of God says I'm healed. So the truth says I'm healed. The facts say I might have some ailments I'm working with, but his word says I'm healed. And I choose to settle my life on the truth that changes not because these facts change from day to day. So you've got to imagine that. You have to dream again. God has given you permission, and I believe COVID has given you a canvas. COVID has given you a canvas, and it's up to you to draw on top of it. It's given us some clean slates, because now you can't go all the places you used to go. You can't do all the things you used to do. Things have changed. So now that you've got this clean canvas, what are you going to put on it? When you look at your family and your time and what, how you spend your time, what are you going to paint on the picture? What are you going to paint on the canvas? If they, your marriage is not like you want it to be, paint a new picture. 
The time you spend with your children is not like you won't paint a new picture. You've been eating horrible and eating out. You can't do that right now. Paint a new picture. Paint a picture. The O is outline a game plan. Set goals that stretch you and require you to become more. Goals without a date are not goals. They are a wish. If you ain't got a date on it, you're wishing. You can't wish wait away. You can't wish your way to a good marriage. You can't wish your way to good health. You've been trying to wish your way 20 pounds for 20 years. It ain't working. Goals are smart. They're specific. They're simple. They're sensible. They're significant to you. They're measurable. They're meaningful. They're motivating. They move you. They're achievable. That means they're agreed and they're attainable. They're relevant. They're reasonable. They're realistic. They're results-based. They're time-bound which means they're time-based, they're time-cost-limited, and they're time-sensitive. Don't be talking about you got goals that ain't got no dates on them. You lying to yourself. How that working for you? If you don't have dates on it, you don't have a plan with it, it's not a goal. You just got a wish list. So you're still a kid talking to Santa, making a list. Mature people have goals with dates and plans. And the last thing is the end, which means navigate the path before you like a woman of purpose, like a woman of destiny, like a woman on a mission. Step in courageously, boldly, intentionally, and strategically into your new. Into your new. This is not the time to think next. This is the time to define your new. You have to get in position for your new. And as I was thinking about my notes, when it was time to push out my babies, I had to get in position. When my son would get ready to shoot a free throw, he has to get in position. When my daughter would get ready to jump over the high bar, she's got to get in position. When my baby girl gets ready to serve a volleyball, she gets in position. And as I was talking, talking about that, and I wrote this down, the Lord says, when it's time to give birth, you get in position. When you want to score, you get in position. When you want to overcome, you get in position. When you want to rise above, you get in position. When you want new, you get in position. And I thought about that in relates to athletes. And I thought about Paul talking about running his race. Everything, he compared himself to that of an athlete. He was running his race. What the heck do you think you're running? We're running a race. And what COVID has reminded us is, wait a minute, every one of us got a finish line. But what's been happening is we act like we don't. We act like there's not a set time. We act like there's not a plan. I, my husband and I were talking a couple weeks ago. Years ago, when the Left Behind series, those books came out and we were reading all those, never in our life did we think we'd be living it. I said, we need to go back and watch the movies. We're living in the Left Behind series. I'm like, what the what? That's supposed to be my grandkids' kids. I'm like, oh, oh, Tim LaHaye was on to something. Then they're going to say they ain't got no change. We got no money. One, oh, Lord, Jesus, I got to go back. If we don't think that we're moving toward that, if we don't think that time is wearing down, we're fooling ourselves. Isaiah 43, 19 says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? And as I read back through that, I want to read it again. Isaiah 43, 19 says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? When I was re reading back through my notes, the Lord says, you can tell what you perceive based on your position. You can tell what you really see, not what you say you see, based on your posture. Because if you're in a position or a posture to birth, you see it. If you're in a posture and a position to score, to rise above and overcome, it's because you see it. When I was thinking about my daughter playing volleyball, when she's serving the ball, she has to get in a position and throw it. she sees that thing. And she's taking it over. I thought about my son. I thought about my children. I thought about them. all of that. They see it. And then they serve it because they're in position. What about you? 
I hope tonight was a blessing to you. Every third Thursday, I'm going to do a coaching conversation. I've kind of worked out a schedule for the month. You know, I have started back doing, you know, coaching and doing some things with that. I'm actually, my website is down because I'm doing, you know, revamping that. But I love this. I love personal life coaching. That's one of the things I do. I love preaching. I love counseling. And one of the things that I realized during COVID is how much I missed that. I ran a business when we lived in Greensboro, and that's what I did for years. I just coached and counseled. And God says, why aren't you doing more of that? That's who you are. And so I'm going to be doing more of that. And so I am doing the free coaching conversations the third Thursday of each month, just making it available to anyone who's interested in that. And then for anyone who attends the class, if they're interested in a one-on-one -on -one session, I'm going to do something special for just those people, just a one-on-one. -on -one. I normally do like three months of coaching because normally I like to take people from where they are to several goal attainment so they can see that. But just stay tuned. I had a meeting yesterday with regarding my website and some of the coaching things that are happening. So just be in prayer as I'm COVID has got me getting back to the things that I love doing that I had gotten off not doing just because of ministry and the things we had going on with the nonprofit and COVID said, get back in position. This is part of what you were born to do. So I do appreciate this and I invite you to spread the word. I am working on relaunching my YouTube station and relaunching some things with our podcasting. So I have missed this and been working on lots of material and we'll be sharing it. And I am grateful that you tuned in. So we do have a couple minutes. Are there any questions or anything you'd like for me to add a little clarity on? Any thoughts about this layout or any suggestions on things you'd like me to add to the topics as we're talking through these next several months? So I do appreciate you being here. I see 27 chat lines. Any questions in there, Charlie? No. no um, I'll go back and take a look at that. Son, you're talking? Okay. <laughs> Listen, I was going to, girl, I'm messing with you today. That was wonderful. Lord. Wonderful. Listen, um, say one more time for me so I can get this right um, about how you know um, um, you can tell when you're um, seeing. Say that for me one more time. I said you can tell what you're perceiving based on your position. Okay. On the end, when you think about Isaiah, it says, and I was, when I was meditating on that, I read that again, and I hadn't even thought about that. I stopped mid verse. It says, Isaiah 43, 19, says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you perceive it? And then it starts talking about, you know, paving the way in the wilderness and the wasteland. But when it says, do you not perceive it? Not perceive and I it. kept meditating on that, do you not perceive it? And it was almost like the question, hey, don't you perceive it? Don't you see what I'm doing? And as I thought about that, I was praying. It says, how do you know if you perceive it or not? Because my response to what I'm seeing is an indicator of what I'm seeing. Yeah. So my posture, if, I, if something's coming at me, I'm ready to catch it. If I'm expecting something, I'm in position to respond. So how, what I'm, if I'm expecting God to do a, do a new thing, if I'm expecting to go higher, if I'm expecting doors to be open, if I'm expecting him to move, then my posture and my position is, come on, I'm ready, I'm looking, not mm-hmm. My posture and my position indicates what I'm seeing. If I have eyes of faith to see, or if I'm looking at the circumstances and I'm dictating how I respond by what, based on what I physically see or what my faith sees. Very good, thank you for that. Thank you for asking. Any other thoughts or questions? I have a question. Yes, um, can you uh, my name is Lakeisha. I'm out of Jacksonville, Florida. Can you go back to the O, please? Can. I, I, I was trying to write it as fast as you were saying. I think you would say outline. <laughs> There's two O's. The last O, the first O was open your heart, your mind, and your soul to new possibilities. And the, the o, last, o. last O was outline a game plan. Set goals that stretch and require you to become more. That outline and game plan is being strategic. What's your roadmap? What's your plan? 
What's, what's your action? What's the blueprint? What, how are you going to walk this thing out? You know, my husband can testify and te I, when I get a plan, I start counting that thing down. It's written. I let my family know. I let people around me know this is what I'm doing. You know, right now I'm on a weight loss journey. A good pastor friend of mine made the declaration weeks ago. She said, on the other side of this, I'm not going to be fatter. I'm not going to be this. I'm not going to be that. And I took that thing seriously. Well, I can't be that. And so I started eating clean. So everybody around me knows I'm eating clean. People bring stuff to the office and I'm like, Lord Jesus, I saw that banana bread today. I'm like, Lord Jesus. And I see stuff. So then every now and then some good stuff come in that I'm supposed to have. That I, so then I'm trying to balance it. But I have to realize, wait a minute, according to my outline, these are the days that I eat what I want. And these are the days I practice discipline. So there's only certain days I have wiggle room according to my outline. And the reality of why I have a blueprint, because if I cheat, the only person I'm cheating on is me. I'm, if I lie, I'm lying on me. And so that outline, that blueprint keeps me accountable. Why I believe coaching and counseling is so important is I believe in accountability. Because you lie to yourself and I lie to myself in a minute. I still use goal cards. I still use checklists. Because if you look on my refrigerator right now, there's a goal card. And I make it public. Why? So I want my family to see what I'm doing and not doing. And every now and then, my baby girl will come up to me and she said, Mama, did you weigh this morning? Your weight ain't on this. I'm like, get off my scale. Because I put it publicly. And she's like, your, your weight ain't up here. Did you weigh this morning? Did you exercise? I'm like, girl, boo. But I do that to make me stay accountable. That's part of my outline. So thank you. But yes, be strategic and then be bold enough to have someone have some visibility into that outline. Hi, Keisha. Thank you for this. Um, I'm Michelle Williams and I'm from Waterbury, Connecticut. Um, this was really great. I think I've been toying with this in my mind and I'm a person I like to write down things and just lately the past few weeks I've been a little frustrated because the husband I got to think for the husband I got to think for the son and I said I got to take time out for me and so now I need to get my plan in order you know now that things kind of open up and we had a lot of time to think but we're not gonna I'm not gonna let COVID you know put me on the back burner but if you can just remind me what was for T, I think I missed that. The husband had called, and if I don't answer, he's going to send out the National Guard. So I had to <laughs> slip away. But if you can go over T, I would greatly appreciate it. I can. And also, just want to tell you, Michelle, I totally understand it's so hard for women to naturally make, us, uh, make ourselves a uh, priority. And we naturally slide to the back. We naturally put everyone and everything ahead of us. And that's a hard, we just, we're groomed that, we're taught that, and it's a battle. But something that I'm learning to do, and my husband has actually taught me this because I was really, really bad at it, is he's, is, he's told me that I have to take better care of me. And the reality, mm -hmm. I think part of, he has a hidden agenda with that because when I'm better and I take better care of me, then I'm just way easier and better to get along with. So I think yeah. he has a hidden agenda because when I am more pleasant and I am good and I'm exercising and I'm feeling good, then I'm just way more pleasant. So I think that's the whole goal. <laughs> but in the process, I have learned that when I do, it's really okay to mm -hmm. take care of me. Self-care is biblical. And in order for me to be what my husband needs or my children need or what the ministry needs or what the business needs, in order for me to be excellent, and for God to get the glory out of my life, then I have to be good to me so I can show up. Because if not, the person who doesn't get what, what needs or my best is God. Because then my attitude gets raggedy, my patience. So really, they may get what they need, but God gets the back end. And that's not yeah. acceptable. So, yeah. But T, the T is time to wake up the sleeping giant within you. That okay. T is now it's time. Now faith, now is no more excuses, no more putting off what you need to do today, trying to figure out what you're gonna do tomorrow. It's time. 
Now it's time to wake up that sleeping giant, that thing that you put to sleep and allow it to just be passive over. It's time to move that. So. And that's exactly what I needed. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Any others? Well, I appreciate you joining me. Go ahead and save the day on the calendar. It'll be the third Thursday. If this has been a blessing to you, share, spread the word. Um, I am going to be posting these lessons on my YouTube station. I haven't revived it all, but I am posting all of my Bible studies. I am starting to record new podcasts, and I'm just putting them on. I actually had a meeting today to start backpiling those onto my YouTube station as I am uploading my podcast stuff. So if you subscribe to that, you'll be able to get access to those things. And a lot of what I'm doing is focusing on um, basically managing you. I'm going to be focusing on overcoming stress, creating some balance and learning. So I have about five or six series that I'm working on right now. And so they're going to show up on my YouTube station first as we're putting down the material for the podcast. So stay connected. Mm -hmm. um, someone asked how they can sow a seed tonight. Oh, thank you. If you can sow a seed, um, you can sow into my cash app is um, dollar sign Keisha B. Spivey. And I do appreciate that. And or if you want to sow into our nonprofit, which is Ripple Effects, that's ca um, dollar sign make ripples. And also, Sonia Renee wants to know, will it be the same info as to join the Zoom? Zoom, yes, this will be the same link. I'm going to set this up as the recurring link for the coaching conversation. So this will be the same link and I'm putting it set for this. And so the next one, Sade will probably start promoing for um, next month. And so um, we'll have that. And so this information, and if I have your email address, I will send you the handout for tonight. So if you, if you have a need, I have a little kind of a handout piece. And so we'll get that sent to you just so you can have the little notes and some pieces of information up there as well. So if I am um, through the registration link, link, if I have your email address, I will definitely send that to you as well. So that it. So I thank you guys. I'm going to close us out in prayer because that's just who I am. And that's what I do. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity tonight to just be reminded that all things work together for our good, no matter how they come or who sends them, that we can just sit and we can stop and we can look to you and we can trust you to show us how to navigate through. So God, even through the lens of COVID and all the challenges that we've had to face and all the things that we've had to adapt through, God, we stop right here in this moment and we give you glory and we give you praise because you are still good. You are faithful, you are loving, you are merciful. You are a protector, you are the lifter of our heads, you are a way maker, and you are ever-present help. God, we thank you for your protection, we thank you for your healing, and God, we thank you for all that you're doing to keep us. God, even as we pray right now, God, we thank you for these moments to slow down and to become in loving union with you, to slow down and to reprioritize our life and to put first things first to where we're realizing, God, we had allowed other things to slip into position that you should be. So God, right now we renounce idols, idols that had slipped in, that had occupied places designated for you. We, we just renounce the temptations and all the things of this world that we had allowed to navigate into places designated for faith and family and fitness. God, just forgive us for being complacent. Forgive us for being slack and lazy and passive on things that we should be passionate and zealous about, especially the things pertaining to you and the things that are pertaining to the purpose and the, per the passion and the calling that you have for us. So God, we thank you for forgiving us and God, we thank you for grace and we thank you for mercy and God, we thank you for the opportunity for the call to sound and for us to come into alignment and to get in position. So God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for speaking into our lives individually and collectively. God, we thank you for everyone listening to this message. And God, we speak blessings to them. God, we declare that this word has been planted into them and that they're being challenged. They're reflecting that they're having surgery done on their hearts and their minds and their lives, but things that need to be taken out, God, and things that need to be put in. We give you an all access pass to every part of us because God, at the end of the day, we want lives that bring you glory. We want lives that honor you. And we want lives that reflect who we serve and that's you. 
So God, we praise you, we thank you, and we honor you for all that you are and all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we proclaim it all, and it is done. Amen. God bless you, and have an amazing evening, and I look forward to seeing you on the third Thursday of August. God bless you.